in IPsec tunnels, let's create a new IPsec tunnel. Uh, you could click remote access and then uh, some steps would be um, addressed for you, but let's use custom in this case uh, so that we can go through every single step here. So we will name this new IPsec tunnel interface dial up. So because we're not creating a static site-to-site uh, -site VPN tunnel, we're creating a, a dial-up user tunnel or, um, you know, yeah, exactly, a dial-up tunnel. Um, we need to specify that remote gateway uh, as such. So our interface here is going to be WAN1, and WAN1 has 166.166.1.2 uh, as its IP. So this is going to be the, the interface and the IP address that the IPsec tunnel is terminating to. If we, for example, wanted to have a, a different IP address that we're terminating this tunnel to, but that, that was also still associated with the WAN1 interface, we have the option to use this local gateway option here and change this IP to something else. For example, this could be you know, 166.166.1.3, for example, right? But in this case, we don't need that, but that just kind of explains that feature. For mode config, we want this enabled in this particular case because we want to be able to provide uh, an address range that clients will get when they connect to the VPN tunnel, right? This would be what the, the IPsec client um, machine will, will receive. In this case, we're going to be using 40 client on a Windows machine. So we have the option here to use the system DNS in, in the configuration that gets sent over to the 40 client machine. We could enable that. If we enable this option here, then the DNS uh, configuration that's seen on network DNS here, that will be sent to the end clients, right? But in this case, we're going to use our own custom DNS server, 192.168.112.105. That's our internal DNS server. And then we're going to require that 40 client injects the following route into its routing table after the VPN tunnel is established. Uh, if we want to specify a full tunnel, we could just uncheck this uh, enable IPv4 split tunnel option here. Now moving forward, since NAT traversal is enabled by default, we can just leave that here. Um, we do want NAT traversal to be enabled uh, because you know, ultimately our end devices, and in, in, in our case, our 40 client machines, usually they're going to be behind maybe a TELUS, a SHA, or AT&T router. Uh, and in that case, we do have to have NAT tra traversal enabled so that we can establish the tunnel. Now let's configure our pre-shared key here. And then because we are doing a dial-up VPN, let's change from main mode to aggressive mode. And this is a bit optional. You could leave this as just any peer ID. Uh, in my case, I, I prefer to usually just change this to specifying a peer ID and then just putting any arbitrary name in here. And that same arbitrary name will be identified on our VPN client as well. And the reason why we might want to do this is in the case that we have multiple um, dial-up VPN configurations on our FortiGate. It allows the FortiGate to associate a particular VPN request with a particular VPN configuration on the FortiGate. So in this case, if the local ID is VPN1 on a 40 client machine and then the peer ID is VPN1 as specified here, then the FortiGate can associate that particular request with all of the configuration within this dial-up VPN interface config. And finally, we want to require that users enter a username and password before they can authenticate too. So under XAuth, we specify auto server, and then we will choose the VPN group that we have. In this particular case, we're just using uh, a local user group, which references a local user. Now that we have the VPN interface created, let's create a firewall policy. All right, the incoming interface will be the tunnel interface that we just created called dial underscore up. And then we want to be able to provide access to our internal network, which is 192.168.112.1. In this case, we'll specify the source as the dial up VPN range, which is 15.15.15.1 to 15.15.15.100. And then the destination will be our 112 network. And we'll allow all traffic, and we can disable that. 
So there's a couple extra CLI items that we can uh, configure as well. So how we can access that VPN interface configuration is by going configure VPN IPsec phase one dash interface. And then we'll just edit uh, question mark and we'll find the names of our um, VPN interfaces that we've created. So here we go, dial up what we just created a moment ago. Uh, we'll type in show to see the existing configuration. So first thing we'll do here is we'll add another um, DNS server. Uh, and that can only be done via CLI. So let's go IPv4 DNS server 2. And then we'll just use a public DNS server as our secondary here. Another thing we can do to prevent us having to enter the, the full domain name, uh, the full, I guess, server and domain name um, to access certain internal resources, we can use this command called set domain. And then we'll just use we'll just use domain1.com, right? So for example, now instead of instead of typing in ping um, server1.domain1.com, now we could just type in ping uh, server1 without anything else after that because now our client, our 40 client, which is on the Windows machine, now the Windows machine will have um, this DNS suffix domain1.com um, so that now all we have to do is just type in server one instead of the whole entire host name. Okay, and then we'll type in end to save our configuration. Okay, so let's test now. So uh, if you don't already have the full 40 client, um, then what you can do is you can just go to the Fortinet website and then scroll down to the very bottom of the 40 client uh, trial downloads or free downloads. And in this case, you can download um, the 40, 40 client VPN only, which, which offers us SSL VPN and IPsec VPN, which is uh, exactly what we need for this particular case. Okay, let's configure our VPN. So we'll set our IPsec VPN here, and then uh, let's just specify a name here. This is the public IP of the FortiGate. Put in our pre-shared key. And then we'll specify our, our local ID here, which is VPN1 to match the FortiGate configuration. And then let's just save it here. Put in our username and password. Perfect, now we're connected. So here's some relevant information from the Windows machine with 40 client installed on it. So we have domain1.com as our DNS suffix. We have 15.15.15.1 leased as an IP address from the FortiGate. Our DHCP server is a dummy IP of the .2 IP. And then we have a, uh, you know, a network route to 192.168.112.0 slash 24 via that same dummy IP 15.15.15.2 as the next hop. And we can confirm that we can actually ping a Windows machine that's on our destination network. And when we try RDP access to that same .2 machine, there we have it. We can access it. Now for troubleshooting, uh, if we want to troubleshoot on the client, uh, we can do so, and, and this is a bit limited because we're, we're using um, the, the free version instead of the, the full version. If we were to have upgraded in this case, we will get uh, you know additional troubleshooting features and technical support. But in this case, let's go to settings, and then we can export logs from the client.